Welcome to East Tennessee Pinball. Uh, today we got this uh, Dade East Jurassic Park. Fixed one of these not too long ago. Uh, it's got some issues. It's got a couple of blown fuses. Uh, we get one of those two is blown and one of these up here is blown on the power supply. If you're wondering where all these wires are, up here there's a rectifier mounted that's supposed to be mounted over here on the board. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, it looks like those three wires got burned up and somebody has just, it looks like they've got these three tapped into it, three other ones. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to pull this board out of here. I'm going to recap it, put a put a rectifier back where it's supposed to be over here and uh just go through this power supply it, at the moment it doesn't boot at all so uh we'll get the power supply going and then we'll go from there so now that i got the board out i can see what they've done so they've just tapped the lines in the back and then they've got them connected up here so i need to keep track of what goes to what because i'm gonna have to redo this so red goes to red, orange goes to gray, and black also goes to gray. Uh, so the orange goes to the gray and green, and the black goes to the gray and gray and white. All right, I got that, and I'm just gonna, I don't know, I guess I'll unscrew that rectifier up there. So I've got the board out. This all looks kind of goofy. On the other hand, I got this board out of the game and I didn't have to cut anything or desolder anything, so. You know, I've seen a lot worse. Uh, so I'm going to start. I don't know if I've got one of these connectors or not. I may. I'm, I'll, I'll see if I do. Uh, I don't really want to leave it like this. So if I don't have one of those, I'll have to get one. I know I've got these. I could probably reuse this one. If I get those clean enough that I can get it passed into the board, I could, this one's, well, I don't know this good. I can check it. I'll probably just put it in, put it in a new one. Uh, and recap this thing. And So first thing I'm going to do is go through my parts bin and see if I've got one of these. I'm, I'm male. Well, I've got a female side, but I do not have the male with the header on there. Male side with the header. So I have to get that ordered. In the meantime, I think I'll start by desoldering this, those four wires there. So I already got one of them off. They're coming out pretty easy. Got my iron up pretty dang hot because there's so much trace to heat up there we go oof burnt myself a little bit so i can turn it down a little now and uh try to clean up these uh, i don't know what you call them when they're a big slot like this i don't know if they're still caught a pattern or something else Wait a second for my iron to heat back up, quenching it. Now well, that ought to work. Let's see. Actually, before I put that back in, I think I'll go ahead and start replacing these caps because some of these are a little bit, they're easier to get to. If that's not in the way, and that's not going to be a problem to 
get back in. Well, these won't be the problem for that, but that's a little bit of an issue to get, you know, when you're getting into this one, that's easier with that rectifier out. So maybe I'll go ahead and start recapping this. And this one here, as I remember, is a problem child a lot of times. So it doesn't look bad though on this board. Like I said, there was two burnt, that, that looks like the burn up one. There was one that was burnt up on this one and then one of the uh, two uh, fuses that were fused for the two rectifiers down below this board. So that one, I'm pretty sure that's the, the blown one just by looking at it. Somebody has swapped this one out already. It appears anyway. And it is not wanting to come out very easily. There we go. See what that is. Yeah, that's, I don't believe that's an original one. Uh, so 125, and I should probably check the sizes on these because since it's not original, it may not be the right one. So uh, I'll get schematics out and verify all these that are that I don't think are original. Like that one wasn't. That one's been resoldered. The rest, most of the rest of these. So somebody's just swapped out a few of them. So there wasn't any corrosion. That 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 one looked all right. So before I grab one, let me get, get the schematics and figure out. This is going to be kind of a pain looking them up. So I got all capped. Uh, there was one of them. This one here, the schematics called for a 25 volt. And this one, the one I pulled out was a 16 volt. It's a little troubling. Uh, the cap itself didn't actually look bad. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can jam in a new rectifier in, the, in there. And uh, I may have to clean those holes out a little bit more. Maybe not. So that rectifier slid in there nice and easy. Just gonna get it tacked in here about the right height. I got it pretty crooked. Not that it really matters, but there, that's a little bit more even. Uh, so now that all the caps are swapped, I should probably get up my multimeter and start measuring these diodes, the fuses. Like I said, one of them's already burned up. Look at the header pins too. They probably need some attention. First, let's get let's go through the diodes. Let me back up a little bit here. Okay, so I got it on the diode test. Uh, red to the unbanded side, looking about 0.5, anywhere from 0.4 to 0.7. I'm reading nothing. There we go. 0.5, perfect. 0.5, perfect. There's another one there. 0.5, couple more here. This looks good. Looks good. 
also good. I believe that's one more, it looks like. That's a funny looking diode, so I'm not sure that that's going to have the same reading. It's uh, like a Zener diode. Sometimes those are like a little bit different. They're not necessarily between 0.4 and 0.7. They have a different range. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is because I don't know off the top of my head, but I know it's a little bit different. Here's another one that looks just like it, and it's also the same. So that's pretty good confirmation that they're they're good. Uh, I'll buzz these fuses real quick. Yeah, there's my dead one. And I'm going to pull off these anyway and make sure that they're the right size. I can finally get a better tool. This is my favorite um, fuse puller. It's like a pack of these on sale every now and then at Harbor Freight for a, like a dollar. Uh, so this is a 7 amp slow blow where it's supposed to be per printed on the board, and that, that is a 7 amp slow blow. And if you're gonna work on one of these boards, it's worth checking these fuses. I mean, I always say this, but more often than not, there's some that are not properly sized. See, that says five, I believe. I need to get my spectacles so I can see. I really, really wish these things were printed better. They are so hard to see, and the newer ones are even worse. That's definitely a five, so that's wrong. Undersized, so this is a half amp slow blow, and that's our dead one, so don't have to measure it. This is supposed to be an eight. And it is a five. This is supposed to be a four. What do you want to bet it's a five? It is a five. This is supposed to be a five. I bet it's a five. If it's not, I'm just going to say that's silly. That is a five. So we need a four, an eight, and a half, and a seven. It's all slow blow. All right, so I got all those swapped. I'm gonna reflow the solder on these headers, assuming they need it, and I bet they do. Actually, they don't. Let me grab them. They don't look horrible. They've never been reflowed before. You see just a barely a tiny, tiny crease starting to form on that one there. But really, they look pretty good all in all. Nonetheless, I'm gonna reflow them real quick because it doesn't take very long and just good preventative maintenance for the future. So I'll start with doing these here real quick. Yeah, I'm in here. I found the part number for this little header pin thing. It's uh, $13 on Marco's. I think DigiKey had it for like 10. So it's, yeah. Uh, I'll probably get it from Marcos because I can bundle this other, some other stuff and maybe a pinball life's got one too. I would have more from them than Marcos. Anyway, so I don't I don't know what all goes through here. I, I, I bet money that's the GI lights though. They'll burn up like that. I don't know what else is going through here. It could be some of these probably on this board too. The, G, the AC comes on here, gets fused, and goes back out again. It could be that's all it is. And it's not even necessary for the game to boot up or anything. I guess I could look, but I'm betting that's what it is or something like close to that. 
I'm just looking at the tree, following some of the traces on here. But the GI was absolutely working. At least some of it was when I booted the game up or tried to boot it up. So anyway, I've been through this board, replaced the fuse, placed all the caps. Nothing stood out as being really messed up. Uh, I didn't ever try measuring any voltages because I knew I was going to pull it out anyway and do some repairs on it. So I guess uh, tomorrow I'll plug it in, replace that other fuse that's blown. I'll show you which fuse I'm talking about. So it's one of those two, and I have done, I believe those two fuses are the fuses for these two rectifiers right there, and I've done a diode test on both of those, and those both check out to be good and unshorted. So uh, I'm not sure why. It looks like it's that one. This is the one that's blown just by looking at it visually. I don't know why that's blown. I probably should figure out exactly what that goes to. That looks like that goes... I bet that... I bet... I bet that, well, I don't know what it goes to. So white and red for sure. I don't know where, I don't see where white and red, it's... There it is right there. Is that the same? Oh, that go, oh, it's, oh, it's that rectifier right there. Okay, well, I did check that side of it. I don't know where the other side goes out. It goes out here. There's the white and red. I don't know where it's going to. It's going down here. White and red. Looks like there's one there. I don't know if that's the same one. It probably is. Looks like it's going off the play field. So, I don't know. I guess I should see exactly what those are. I probably should know, but I don't. Okay, that's for the... There's a tag right there for 30 volts. AC for 13 volts. So that's the voltage probably, that's the voltage going to the rectifier that's getting rectified down to probably the solenoid voltage, uh, be my guess, or the flipper voltage, one or the other. Oh, we have another one of these dudes right here. The octopus, where this is mounted on the other, off the board. Jeez. So I'm going to get to pull this board too. I didn't see that in the first time. Yep. Why? I guess it maybe it runs cooler. Maybe I don't know why somebody did that. I don't know. I guess in the future, if you ever want to swap this out, it's maybe it's easy. I don't know. I don't go bad that often. In any case, it's late. I'm gonna get back to this. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe, maybe a week or two from now. So it's been about a week, well, three or four days anyway, since I've looked at this. I just got through ordering this part here from Marcos and I was gonna work on some other things on this game and I was putting on my Molex and then I saw this in here. So I've got one of these already. So I'll, I guess I'll get another replacement. So I'm gonna go, this, this is good though, because I can go ahead and finish this up and get it in the game and once I get this in there I think this report will be good as far as I know I mean I've, I've recapped it I've checked what I can easily check and then we can go from there so this is pretty dirty so I'm just going to start by just cleaning it up just a little bit sometimes it helps the desoldering I think if you get a lift of the dirt off and I can't really tell this is doing a whole lot but it's not hurting anything for sure and I'm going to add some fresh solder and then see if I can get this old solder out of there. And that'll dry in no time. If I put a soldering iron, it will dry even faster.
sounds like frying an egg. All right, hopefully this thing comes out of there moderately easy. <laughs> nope. I may have to use some of that low temperature stuff. Ah, oh, that one came out better. I'm gonna have to do this twice. That old solder is just hard to get off. That one's just pushing through. You probably just grab it something to grab it with. That might be a better strategy. This is a better strategy. Alrighty, so now I, they ought to come clean a lot easier without having that post in the center. Yep. Feeling that one, uh, that one kind of trace is kind of pried up. That's going to be hard to. Uh, we'll see. This is going to, this may be end up being a mess. This thing just comes out. Yep, a nice little gouge. You see, some of these are that one does not look very happy. I don't know that it's connected to anything. Number 12. Oh, that's the ground, but it only has to attach on your rod. You can't even see any of this. Uh, yeah, that number 12, it's kind of corroded under there. The pads are the, it's gone, but it's only got to connect on this side of the board. It attaches to the ground plane here. 
Uh, that one is kind of loose. And that one has to connect over here to this pin. So the issue is whether the solder will suck down effectively down to the other side when I put this in there. And also it's kind of, the, the pad is kind of squeezed so that it may not want to go through the hole. So we shall see. I should have looked which way. Okay, it's drawn. Whoops. That's nice. I'll be pushing that one. I'm just going to put a little heat on this one. Yeah, it's trying to. come up off the board. Whew. Okay. I think that's all the way in there in flush. Yep. Okay. So I will solder this thing up. That one, I saw it suck down. I don't know if y'all can see, but it's like good and concave there, which means see it's bulbous and there it's sucked down. So that's what you want to see is that it's so it's going over to the other side. Hmm. That's my problem, child. I'm not sure that one went to the other side of the board. If it didn't, I think it goes over one of these two pins over here. If it doesn't, didn't, then I will just put a jumper on the back of the board. So it's that one goes to that one. So I'll grab a multimeter here and I'll check to see if we've got continuity. So zero ohms. That's good. That's what we want to see. All right. So that looks a lot better. So in the game, I'm going to have to, I think, I believe it's these three here that were soldered to the back of the board. I'm going to have to put the female pin connector into the Molex housing so they will properly go on this board. Then I put this game in there, plug it in, and it'll be all factory. So here's that connector that goes on there. And you can see it just, it kind of got hot. And that, those, at least those two connectors are burnt up probably. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna replace all three of them because they've been cut and they've, you know, they've got I don't know where the other one, there's the other one there. Nope, that's not the other one, that's just another. There, it's right there. No, there's one, two. Oh, it's right there. Okay, those are the three. And you've got, they've got the old wire colors on there, so if I do them one at a time, so there's gray, gray and green, gray and white, and then gray. So, gray and white, gray, gray and green. So, whoever cut them, thanks for leaving me the green and the white so I can see which one goes where. I appreciate that. So I've got this little tool. It really helps. It's about the only way to get these things out of there without totally mangling it. And hopefully I can just reuse this housing. I know it looks burnt and it is burnt, but that, do that doesn't really matter. What matters is if the pins are good. I'm sure those pins are bad, but they're coming out anyway. Well, so the tool I've got, it works. For, it fits over the male connector perfect, perfectly. It doesn't fit over the female connector. So I'm gonna have to get in there with a pick and try to get those out, which is going to be a real pain in the butt. Well, it's too brittle, it broke, so I'm going to just have to repin this entire connector. So I've got this new one, I'll put it on. Uh, so just, well, not 12 pins, there's a couple missing, I guess, nine pins to 
put on there and I've got them all in this little kit. So I'll get to crimping. Well, that's all cleaned up. I think I will go ahead and do something with this while I'm here. Uh, I just, un well, I'll get two hands and undo that and show you what's behind it. Who knows? Well, it is a good solid connection. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just, uh, bend that over and put some heat shrink on it and uh, call it good. All right, that looks a lot better. Uh, and it's a message to anybody in the future that that is actually soldered because if it's got electrical tape, about at least 50-50 that it's not going to be soldered. If it's like that, you know it's soldered. It doesn't say so, but you pretty much just know it is. Anybody that's going to take the time to do that is going to have it soldered. My experience. All right, so we got the power supply mounted in the game. Got it plugged in. Uh, so this is exciting, you know, I'll do a smoke test here. So when I got this game, I had a fuse blown here, had one of these down here. I did do a, a, a test on these two rectifiers, did a, a uh, uh, diode test on both of those, and they checked out. Haven't done anything with this yet. I'm going to uh, just, if nothing else, just to get this back on the board like it's supposed to be. But I'm going to... Before it wasn't doing anything, it was not booting up at all. Uh, and even the soundboard wasn't making any sound. So, uh, I'm on, let's see what happens here. This, this is always exciting to me. Okay, we got a sound, we got a roar. That was more than we got before. And we've got lights here. Before they were all just on kind of dim. Uh, we don't have any play field lights. Oh, we are booted. Yes, okay, major progress. Not sure why we don't have any play for GI lights or anything on down here. Uh, could have been this great fix I did right here. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. It's that plug. I never plugged it in the GI lights. Uh, let me do that real quick. Okay, now we got GI lights and we got the controlled lights going. I, I think we're ready to roll. I just click click the start button. May, may need credits. I don't know. I think get some of this stuff out of the way. So we can see what we're doing here. And the six balls missing. That could be part of the problem. Oh, it's on free play. I don't know if they took the balls out of this game when they gave it to me or not, but uh, I'll take this last off, see if it's got any balls in it. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six balls in it. You may not know there, apparently it doesn't know there's six balls. I hit the start button. Wait, now it does. It's weird. Welcome to Maybe one of these switches just wasn't quite making. I don't think we've got any solenoids. When I first turned it on, I turned it on again. Is this T-Rex supposed to move around? Oh, that's just locked up. Uh, yeah, we have no solenoids. Probably don't have solenoid voltage. Uh, okay, well, progress. We've got lights. I don't know if we've got switches or not. We don't, okay, so we still got major problems. We don't have switches. And we don't have solenoids. So it's not scoring either. But it's booted. It's playing something. Uh, I guess the next thing I'll do is go to the power supply and see, check my voltages on here, see if I'm getting them all. And we'll go from there. So I just checked those voltages there, the plus 12, minus 12, five on the ground, they're all there. And I scroll down here and I haven't checked it, but that certainly looks blown right there. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the same one I swapped out earlier. Uh, so that's probably our solenoid voltage right there. And that's probably why nothing's working. Uh, so something is short. So that actually, that solenoid voltage, as I remember, passes through this board. I'm gonna go through and check all the fuses again and uh, it's probably one of these rectifiers is bad, I'm guessing. Or it could be, could be something on this board here. The 
to be the flipper circuit. I don't, I don't know if that's a different voltage. I want to say that's a different voltage than the solenoid voltage on this game, but I'm not 100% not positive. I'll have to look. Uh, I think it is. Anyway, I'm going to start by checking all the fuses. No, that one's gone. Let's see if that there was one up here that blew also it was blown when I got the game. I, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll check it and I'll get right back with you. So two fuses were blown. This one here at five on the flipper board and also this one. So I'm thinking maybe it's the flipper board that's causing all this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this one disconnected or not fused. And we'll just refuse this one and try to start the game and see if this blows with this with this fuse here at five out. Okay, so that fuse is replaced. That one's not. Turn it on, see if we see the flash. Doesn't look like it blew. And we do have solenoid power now. T-Rex is kind of doing his thing. It does a diagnostic test on this game of the T-Rex. He tries to eat a ball, says, hey guys, I'm alive. Your skirt's a little crooked there, dude. He's going through the motion, make sure he can tell when he's up and when he's down, when he's left, when he's right. Start, start a game now. I just click the start button. Should kick at a ball, maybe. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Sure enough. Okay, so that confirms my suspicion that the problem with the, that blowing is on my uh, flipper board. So I needed to take the flipper board out anyway because I wanted to do this. So uh, I actually didn't, never test, tested that okay, fire. Uh, rectifier there, but it could be anything on this board. So I'm going to turn the game off. And I'll pull this board and go through it, and hopefully we find a big freaking short, and that will fix this game. All right, so I'm going to go through this board. I'm going to start by going looking at this bridge rectifier. Uh, I'm on diode test here. So if you get something like three or two, uh, now I've lost track of where I was at. That means you're backwards. So point six. Point six, point six, point six. So that tests good. I bet it's one of these or bad. Uh, let's start by just going through these dials real quick. They should all be point four to point seven, and really they should all be real similar. So let's start with one of these. I think that was, yeah, okay, that's the, try it the other way around, 5.5. I'm really looking for a short here. Haven't seen anything yet. Uh, well, well, about rather obvious stuff to. Well, there's a bunch of little, t yeah, there's a small one for each one of these. Well, let's check these resistors. They're supposed to be three ohms each. Yeah, that's going to be our problem.
check these. I don't know what they are, but they should all be the same. 218. 218. Probably at 220. Oh, it's 219.9. That's pretty close. What's that one? That's uh, 8.2 kilowatt or kilo ohm. Yeah. My cap is not shorted. Well, I haven't gone between the sides of these. Well, let me go on diode. I didn't actually check. Do it. See if they're all the same. Between the first and third leg. Huh. Make sure they're all open between. Okay, I've tested those every way. You can test them, I believe. Check this one more time. I thought one of them was a little bit goofy. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. That's... About as normal as you could be. Well, I don't see anything wrong with this. But certainly, that's blowing. It's possible that this is bad and it just tests good because, you know, you're just putting a tiny amount of current through it and with a full load. It, it fails, that happens sometimes. The Dow test is not 100%, but it's 90-something percent. It, that's probably good. Might not be. I'm going to swap it either way. I'm going to dig out the schematics. I'm going to look at this board. I'm going to figure out exactly what F5 goes to. And maybe that, well, I can see right on the board. I can see from the back side of the board. It goes to this, this rectifier. You see, that leg goes to that trace. Yeah, so that's that's what it goes to. It goes to BR1. It feeds BR1. So, I don't know. It could be that something else that downstream of this board is shorted, on the, like on the play field, and that's causing this thing to blow immediately, and there's nothing wrong with this board. Uh, I'm not sure I've got... And in these, in these bladed, I just ordered a bunch of them. I knew I was about out. And I think I am completely out of them. So I may be stuck working on this until I get a... Because I don't want to mess... Because by chance, if this is the problem, I don't want to stick in the board and I'll take it take it in and out twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this out, change this cap, reflow the solder, the header pins, and... Uh, then when this, when this part comes back in, I'll be ready to throw it in here, put it back in the game. And in the meantime, I'll, then I'll check out the F5. But I got my soldering iron hot. So uh, I'm going to just go through what I can on this board while I've got it here. Oh, wow. That just cleared it out as it pulled it. That was awesome. Maybe they all do like that. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not gonna have need. I was, I was thinking I had a rectifier in there, and I don't. You know, I was thinking about why somebody might take this off the board. I, maybe they were thinking it would run cooler or keep the board cooler or something. But I think that's a mistake to because 
this thing's mounted on the board. It's got no place for the heat to go other than back up through this wires. I mean, normally that would be attached. You know, you could put a heat sink on the outside of this, but there wasn't one. If it's mounted in the board, it's got these huge traces. I'm assuming that's why they put these big traces. They don't need it for the current. And the only reason to make these traces so big is for heat dissipation, so it can pull that heat off. So I'm thinking that's probably why the engineer that designed this board did it that way. And then once you take it off the board, that, I don't know, maybe those maybe those 18 gauge wires are equivalent, but they're, they're insulated. They're thermally also, so I don't know. I, I would imagine this board is probably more effective at cooling than, than those insulated wires. Okay, so next off. Just, they don't, yeah, they actually do. Those look pretty sorry right there. I'm going to do all of them real quick here. Changing this cap, and I was gonna have to splay it out. And then I realized, oh, there's another set of holes here, uh, so that worked perfect. I love it when engineers do make things more compatible. That looks a lot better. Yeah, that's gonna work perfectly. just because I can't stand it. There we go. All right, uh, so this board is ready for a new bridge rectifier. In the meantime, I'm gonna go figure out exactly what F5 BR4, because this cap, so we swapped the cap in case that it didn't look bad. I don't, it goes out. You see the board right here. It goes out to the 50 volts right off the board here. That's going to be the flipper voltage. So, unless one, I guess I could check the flipper coils, see if any of those are shorted. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty certain this game does not has has a separate voltage. Well, I know it does. Well, I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent positive, but. Yeah, it does, because it's making the 50 volts right there. I know, that's that's a different voltage than the solenoid voltage. So, uh, I feel fairly confident. Yeah. And let's, uh, hopefully, hopefully this is bad. And I'm just, we're just not seeing it with the diode test. Uh, and not, I've already ordered the part, so a day or two, it'll show up. Uh, and I'll swap it out and we'll throw this in the game and figure out if that fixed it or not. And I was thinking this would fix the game, but no, we still have the switches error. So we have, we're, none of the switches are recording. So uh, that's that could be a whole another ball, real fun ball of wax. So I pulled up the schematics here. So there's that BR1 and there's the F5. So just like what I saw on, this, on the board, it feeds the BR1. And yeah, it's... These possibly could, or sorry, those big tr transistors probably possibly could have, but it had gone out to the game back. And uh, so once I get this new bridge rectifier, I can put it in the game. And the only, it just, it goes off the board on J, J3 and J7.
J7, I don't know if it goes up to J6. It does not go to J6. So if I just put this back in the game, I can disconnect J3 and J7 if it's still blowing, and then I'll know if it's still on the board or not off the board. I probably, I should have done that while it was, before I pulled it out. I should have pulled up the schematics, and then I could have verified for sure if the if it was shorting on the board or somewhere off the board but anyway uh i'm not gonna put it in the game now because it's kind of a pain i'm just gonna wait and i bet that's the problem or yeah that one there i bet that was it even though it tested good so anyway uh a couple days it'll be like two seconds for y'all so we got that rectifier in the mail got it installed replaced f5 and i'm going to leave Discon I'm gonna put it in the game. I'll leave it disconnected J7 and J3. So this one and and that one. That one up there, there about and that one. And uh see if it blows or not, and then I'll plug in J one at a time, J3 and J7, and hopefully nothing happens. Board in the game, J7 and J3 are disconnected. Everything's fully fused. I'll boot it up here. I'll try to boot it up. Uh, we are booted. F5 did not blow. I hear T Rex is going around. Solenoids are working. I'm going to turn it off. And uh, let me, I'm going to look at the schematic, see which one of these is coming in and which ones. I think that's actually, I'm pretty sure uh, J J3 feeds F5, which goes to PR1, or maybe it's coming off the board. I don't know. I'm going to plug in J3. So do this again with J3 plugged in. Watching for the flash at F5. Nope. Did not blow. And yeah, we got T-Rex is moving, it's booted. Okay, well, uh, I'll turn it off and I'll plug in uh, J7. Okay, one more time. We're up and running, we're booted. Uh, let's see if I can start a game here. How about that? I don't know if we're ready to start a game. Please wait. Yeah, we gotta wait for the T-Rex to get done. Hurry up, Freddy. Freddy. Well, I'll just call him Rex. That's a good name for him, right? Okay, free play. We're ready. Now, this game came in originally they called me and said one of the flippers was weak and i can just okay, that left one the right one's nice and snappy the left one's not so it's working again uh but but from the time they called me until they brought it in the game died completely so now i'm gonna fix what was the original complaint when they called me on the phone let me turn this thing off it's noisy so yeah when they originally called me it was like a couple couple weeks before they brought it in. They said one of the flippers was lazy, and I can tell that one is kind of lazy. Uh, just it's not snappy. Uh, and then, but when they brought it in, it it wouldn't boot up at all. You know, it it, it had died uh, in that two or three week period. So anyway, so that's so what what did we fix from this? The only thing I swapped out was well, I swapped that cap. I really don't think it's that. And that that rectifier, I think that rectifier was that I took out of there was probably bad, uh, even though it tested good. Because sometimes that happens, and uh, I think this was one of those sometimes. Because now it's working, and it you all saw it was blowing that fuse, and it was blowing that fuse right upon boot up, you know. And it's like it speaks to that bridge rectifier because that's 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 right in the path. So. Uh, Anyway, I think I'll pause here for a minute. I gotta figure out if I got all my flipper parts. I think I do for these DDs. I think I've got them all. 
anyway uh so i'll dig into that on another day all right so it's time to do a little testing to see if this thing's gonna work uh i don't you know when i got it the gun game wouldn't boot up and the shaker motor would just run uncontrollably uh so i just want to see what kind of go through real quick to see what's working what's not working I bet a bunch of bulbs are not working. Some of the flashers probably. Maybe some of the solenoids, some of the switches. This is maybe not the most efficient way to do it, but it's definitely the most fun way to do it. Uh, so come on, T-Rex, finish up. All right. Well, a lot of the lights are working. So I see one there, but these other three are not going. Oh, wait, there's two. Maybe there, there's a sequence. I don't know, maybe, I'll have to go through the test mode. That one only would. Anyway, I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna try to start again. Perhaps is looking for a ball. Let's feed him one. Up around. Check your motor work. It's left flipper. Yeah, the left flipper sucks. That's why it came in. Uh, one of the pop bumpers didn't work. Oh, that thing worked. You didn't say the magic word. Check all three of those, man. in there, it's hard to hit. That one's up against a reel. That works. See what Freddy will do, correct? Oh, no, no. Ah. When you eat a ball, oh, no, no, no. we ate it. Ah, uh, this picture is having a little trouble. You saw that kicked it four or five times before it came around. I jumped out. I wonder if there's supposed to be a pad right there to a bumper of sorts. It looks like there might be. Well, one out of three is not really very good. Two out of four. I don't know. I'm in it. That thing does. Oh well, that kicked out better that time. There it is. Yeah. So that's gonna need some work. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it gave up. Let's see if my button works on the. As you can't see. I'm gonna press the button on the gun here. Smartness will work. I guess my smart pistol started the multi ball. Oh, finally got the ball out of there. Okay, I've got one ball in my hand, so we're still playing. Oh, God! Those raptors are clever. I don't think I ever got up to here. Now! Now! Shoot the net by now! I think that switch is working. There's two switches here, one works and one doesn't. The pop them. That one's about to go. Probably all about to go. Pretty hard. Uh, we definitely need some new rotors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this here. And, uh, go into the test mode here if I figure out how to get into it. Oh, that's the wrong way. Go the other way. There's a switch. 
there. Okay, let's do this. Tops. Okay. Right switch is on. Center switch is on. Left switch is on. Okay, T Rex is good. Laser kick, put ball in the rafter. I'm kind of afraid of doing that. He's going to bite me. Yep. Okay. I saw that work during the game. So, I went around. This is a lot easier. Here and better. That one's just physically sticky. It's stuck. So that one is working. It's just it's a non-scoring. It's just so the game knows where the ball is at. Uh, there's another one back there. I know that one works because it kicked the ball out. switch down there is working because it kicked the ball out and the switch down there works because it kicked the ball out so I think within reason all the switches are working uh, trough oh the trough switch has got balls in it yeah okay of course yeah okay all lamps are on yeah all these lamps are working it's just the uh During the, the display test, they weren't they don't go. So that one's not working. That one's not working. There's a few that are not burning. Probably just burn out bulbs. I think those white ones are probably flashers. Well, that one's not. Uh, yeah, it is going. It's not very bright. Let me turn the lights off. It makes it a little easier. Yeah, so there's only a handful of bulbs that are not working. So I'm gonna at this point I'm gonna be optimistic and just say those are burnt bulbs because there's only three or four. So let's hope for that. And uh, let's go see if we can get the flashers to go. Cycling the flashers. Okay. Oh, those are the house. Look at these. These are just uh, 455. So there's a flasher. Those three flashers are going. Uh, okay. Those two went. That one went. I think I saw that one go. Those three there went. That one went. I think all these went. Yeah. We got all the yellows and red. That one went. That one went. That one went. Hard to know if I'm seeing all of them because some of them are translucent through the play field like that one and that one. I wouldn't know they were there unless I saw them flash. So I'm going to have to get the manual out and see if there's other ones that should be going that are not going. Or pick up the play field and look. That would be easier, maybe. The balls are going to go crashing. I'm gonna want to anyway. One did. Okay. Uh, just looking for all the bulbs, make sure they're the big ones. That's me leaning up against the play field. I believe every single one is going. So, there's not too much, so this kicker, it's this mechanism here, is a little on the weak side. 
So uh, to start with, I'm gonna actually, y'all can't see it, the plunger little top piece is kind of janky. Uh, that may be the whole problem. So I'm gonna pull that apart and take a better look at that. And uh, maybe change a few bulbs while we got it up too. So that jankiness I saw felt is by design. So this thing is kind of a spring loaded, just kind of take a look. But when I pulled it off, this thing came off, so somebody had put a connector on there. Instead of it, probably broke, and they didn't have the means to solder, so they crimped on that. So it's probably just a poor connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder that on, and I bet that will fix this issue. While I'm at it, got it out, I might go ahead and probably will just go ahead and put a new sleeve in there because that is probably for sure the original sleeve, and that will increase its its juice just a little bit too. So get that solder on there. I didn't take this apart, put a new sleeve on because it's kind of a pain to take this apart. I think you'd have to take all those clips off there to get some kind of a push pin to get this head off. And uh, the whole thing's, you know, it's kind of delicate and uh, I don't want to break it. Uh, so I'm not going to replace that sleeve. It, there's really, it's, it's not sticky. It'd be nice to replace it. I was just going to do it because I had it apart, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it back together, and I think the, the, the primary issue was that poor electrical connection right there. Okay, I got the game started up here, so let's see. It kicks a little bit better. The first one was right away. That thing is a little... I guess that's just the way it is. There's three for three. Four for four. We go five for five. I'm calling good. Oh, didn't make it. Got four for five. So well, that one was perfect. We need to look down in there and see if we're it's an alignment issue. Oh, I can't see much. Get a flashlight or something. I don't know how well you can see that, but the little white pad that hits it, it's a little too far inboard toward the center of the play field. If I get directly above it, it's hard to, well, hard to hold the light and keep the light out of the frame of view. But trust me, it, it's too, it's, it's too far that way compared to the hole. So I'm gonna see if I can Either, I don't know if there's adjustment, I might just end up bending a little bit. So I just grabbed that mech underneath there and just kind of wrenched it a little bit like that. So that it's, it's shooting up the, right through the hole because there really wasn't any adjustment left and right. And I just threw the ball in there 10 times and I was 10 for 10, Let's see if I'm 11 for 11. So I'm calling that one good. I just looked at IPDB, some of the pictures and there is no pad that's supposed to be here. So, I may splay those out a little bit so that, you know, uh, or bring that in closer so the back of this is this. So, it, so there's less room for it to go out sideways. So to bring that, bring that back in a little bit. Uh, either that or, gonna, or just put a pad in there even though it doesn't belong, but it's not going to stick very well because there's nothing flat. There's just the, the Real. So I think I'm just going to bend that slightly so that it doesn't pop out half the time. Okay, so if you see it's slightly acute angle, just a little bit, just just grab those things and oh, I didn't tear that up. That was, that was all the elements of the paint or the chrome and uh, it really oh, it jumps out. Well, I did it 10 times in a row and it didn't. And now the one time I show it here, well, shoot. Okay, I didn't solve anything. Let me try some, try something else. Okay, I bit that one a little some more severely and I actually put that one slightly back. The issue was it was hitting the far side and it's popping out because it's kind of coming around that corner and favoring the outside edge. Uh, so I put that far one slightly down to try to get it to go down. And if it does happen to pop this way, it hits this. So I've done it like 30 or 40 times. It never comes through various speeds. I think it's good. Uh, I'm calling good. All right, so what's left? Uh, we got the wheat flipper. Uh, we got a few lamps out. We got some of these switches. Like this one here 
it's Spark. just an alignment issue. So it's hitting the, that back plate. So it just needs to be physically aligned. Uh, same with a couple of these other ones. So these two are just, yeah, this this green one here is hard. It's the same thing. It's aligned. That bracket in the back is not aligned with the face of it. So just some of that stuff. Um, the only thing that could be an issue is if there's you know a handful of bulbs, if there's a whole row or column out. I don't think that's the case because there's not that many out. So I'm gonna go through the bulbs here real quick and see if that's if I can get all the bulbs working. Well, I just found two bulbs that were out. I uh, swapped those bulbs out and they were good. So this is the situation with these pop bumpers. I'm not, I'm not gonna rebuild these. I could. Uh, kind of got the impression this guy didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on the game. He said no cosmetics, which kind of a signal to me to not, you know, go any deeper than I need to. They're working. They're not as poppy as they could be. I did adjust the switch here, which, so that's the spoon there on from the other side, the skirt. It comes down. If I press it, you see. So I made that a little more sensitive and it's quite possible. So this game I haven't played in a while. Just a little exercise that may free up a little bit, get a little bit better. Uh, I was looking at the, uh, so the one remaining thing is the flippers. And it's the left flippers week. And the first thing, just look at those two flippers. What would Mr. Rogers say about that? Or I guess it's Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. Uh, so that's 090503090502. Now it's possible they have different size quills for this game. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna look because I've got the manual. Uh, the other thing is that there's just it's nasty. So and I don't know how much slop there is in here. Oh, considerable. So that's the one. That's the good flipper. Bad flipper has less slop, but it's still considerable. So I'm gonna get the manual out and make sure, see what coil they're supposed to have. So here's the manual and it shows 090502, which is the one on the left. The 5030 is only supposed to be on the upper right flipper, the, the high ones, the one, so that one's kind of needs to be stronger because you don't, the geometry is such, you don't get as good a whack on it. So, I had it backwards, so that that's the original one, and that's a replacement. And that's the wrong one. That one is supposed to be the smaller one like this. And this, the 503, oh, that's correct, so that's the upper right one. So I think it's just a matter of dirt and gunk and just binding up like there. It's not even wanting to go at all. It's... The coil sleeve is, is if it's if it's in there, it's not, it's dirty and nasty. So just need to be, re be rebuilt. Uh, so the question is whether I want to swap that out. I mean, it's working. It's extra powerful. Uh, you don't really need it, or you shouldn't need it. I don't think I'll swap it. I think I'll just leave it. Uh, but I am going to put all new flipper parts in here, new coil stops, new plungers, and bushings. So... Uh, for the three flippers, get them working, and then uh, I think this one will be good to go. Well, I'm going to have to, you know, they said nose cosmetics, but I am going to at least do a minimal place. It. I'm going to clean this at least like I would clean a game on route. Spend 20, 30 minutes cleaning it up, and it's it'll look a lot better. All these ball trails, you know. That's like two weeks of play on route, but you know, it'll, clean it, wax it, it'll look a lot better. And it's got to get rubbers. Uh, these rubbers are, are, are toasty. So there's going to be a little bit of disassembly to get some of these. Some of these, yeah. So some of these plastics are coming off. So it's not completely without labor, but it's not, this game doesn't, it's not too bad to re swap the rubbers. I don't see anything that's going to take, require too much disassembly. So. Uh, I think I've got these flipper parts. I'm in the process of putting together an order for Steve, and uh, if I don't have any of it, I'm going to order them right now. So I spent a little bit of time, got all the rubbers done. It took a little bit more than I thought because, like, that plastic had to come off or most way off. That one had to come off most way off. This ramp had to come off. 
Uh, it's already broken here, so that kind of made it just a lower disassembly possible. Uh, yeah, and same with this. This plastic and this plastic. You know, a lot of plastics have to come off, but not, not too bad overall. And so uh, I didn't have all the flipper parts for all three of them. So I got those ordered. Those will be in next week. I am going to just take a little bit of time, clean up some Novus 2, and give it a good wax. Just kind of quick over. I know they didn't want anything cosmetics, but I mean, the game's filthy. And I'm set up better to clean it than they are, I'm sure. So I'm going to spend 30 minutes and see what I can do in 30 minutes. So just take a look what it looks like now. And then for y'all, like five seconds, I'm going to show you what 30, 30 minutes will do. Uh... You're seeing the dirty. And Jane would go a lot further. There's no, I couldn't, if I let Jane do this, I would not be able to keep her at 30 minutes. She would want to spend several hours. Okay, I said I was going to spend 30 minutes. I only spent 20. Uh, but it looks a lot better. I mean, it's not, it's not clean, clean, but it's, uh, it's all right, you know. I didn't get that spot right there because that was a little bit more of a pain than you can probably thing is you can't really see that much so basically you end up if you do this real quick and dirty you end up getting the places that you can really see the most i didn't even mess with cleaning the flipper rubbers because they're going in the trash as soon as i get flipper parts that's all going to get thrown away so i didn't bother with that but uh looks presentable uh so i am going to uh put a blanket over this get the dust off of it until next week and i get the uh parts for the flippers and we'll finish this one up so but this video is up finished up right now because i'm gonna post this uh either tonight or tomorrow so if you like the video click like and subscribe and i'll see you manana adios